Hey guys, welcome back. It's Scully. So I had debated on and off for quite some time of making a video where I feel the way I do right now because I wasn't honestly sure how I'd feel when I looked back on it later or, um, you know, the other people watching this video right now. As you probably could have guessed, um, what I'm referring to is to the fact that I feel pretty manic right now. Um, I did discuss that in one of my earlier videos. I probably didn't go into as much detail as maybe some of the other ones on YouTube. But it is a component of bipolar disorder that really a lot of people suffer from, including myself. But there were some other things I wanted to talk about it with it as well, and not just with it, but other mental illnesses. So I figured I'd go ahead and make another video. Plus, I was really excited to see you guys again anyway, so I couldn't contain myself. Okay, so um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about that I thought might actually be a great opportunity, since I'm feeling pretty chipper right now, is called impulsivity. Some people call it impulsivity. Well, I'm sure we've all said it wrong at some point, but yeah, impulsivity, I believe, is the proper pronunciation of it. A lot of people suffer from this. Um, it can be mental illness related. It can just kind of be in general. Sometimes people have a, a brief lapse of ju judgment and they, you know, maybe do things like that or they just maybe, anytime you kind of say and do something without really thinking about it first, that's, well, that's impulsivity. That's kind of it kicking in and kind of giving you that little shove you don't normally have to kind of maybe go in a certain direction. Although it's usually pretty harmless for the most part, impulsivity can be a very debilitating symptom. It can cause a lot of havoc in people's lives, especially if they do things they wouldn't normally do. Um, for some people, this can be episodic, and for some people, this can be a chronic part of something that they deal with um, a lot. And in things like bipolar, it can be episodic with things like mania. But you can also see in other kind of types of mental illnesses where, especially if somebody is maybe having trouble coping with something difficult, especially they can maybe feel more impulsive because if they're really, really desperate to get relief, then they might kind of jump to, to kind of things they wouldn't normally do. So it can be a pretty big thing sometimes. As you could imagine, a lot of stigma around it because when you see somebody kind of doing something that might be considered reckless or just kind of doing it without thinking about it, people are so quick to look at that person and ask themselves, why did that person just do that rather than thinking about why they might be doing it. If you see somebody doing something like shoplifting, you think you, you may just think they're being a thief where that might just be something impulsive they did because maybe they just weren't thinking about it. Maybe they walked out with the item by mistake or maybe they left their, their card in their car and they went to go get it and walked out with the item with them and then they forgot to put it back. I mean, that's not always in every situation, but that's an example. With impulsivity, it can be things like that, or it can just kind of be, like, if you're really quick to spend money is another really good one, especially with bipolar people. They're, um, one of the things they can do in their manic is spend a bunch of money. Again, this isn't just bipolar. Some people, we've all seen that thing that, like, that $50 hat or some really, like, nice food item that they just had to have. Maybe it wasn't good for them. Maybe you didn't have to have it, but kind of right in the moment, like, Oh, oh, that's on sale. I can get that right, right now. So then they go get it. And if it's something like that $50 hat, they might look at that receipt later and think, did I really have to spend $50 on a hat? Could I have maybe, you know, put that on my, my Christmas list? Could I have just maybe gotten that as a birthday gift? Or could I just maybe kind of plan that a little bit more? Because maybe I needed that money for something else. So I feel like that's a pretty common form of impulsivity. Um, impulsivity, I'm sorry, impulsivity. I just said it wrong too, sorry. But yeah, impulsivity can come in things like maybe buying things kind of spur of the moment without thinking about it, or it can just be certain decisions that people make. Because our brains have this very automatic mechanism of just something kind of pops into your head and, and that's the um, kind of more like quicker part of your brain. Um, emotional part of your brain and then the rational part of the brain is kind of supposed to sort it out and think like we can do that we can't do that well um it's very easy for people to impulsively do things if that rational part of the brain hasn't sorted out that choice yet so it, it can especially onset with certain emotions as well like if two people are getting in a really heated argument and you get this little thought in your head by the way please don't do this i'm just using this as an example you can get this really kind of just, it, maybe you weren't even thinking that seriously about it, but because you're feeling more impulsive compared to how you normally would, you get this quick thought in your head that's kind of like, oh, you know, 
that Joe guy, he, oh, he just really pushed your buttons. You, you, you got to do something about that. Why, why don't you, why don't you shove him or something? And then you actually kind of do it without thinking about it. And of course, then there's that part of your brain afterward that's like, what are you doing? Joe's your best friend and you just shoved him. Like, that was rude. So yeah, I'm kind of all over the place with that right now. But you can see how things um, can be pretty small um, with being impulsive or they can go a step farther. And of course, there's always more extreme examples, but those are some pretty basic ones that kind of, you kind of get the idea. We've all, we all get thoughts like that. I did a video on intrusive thoughts and I feel like impulsivity, if people do act on some of the more minor ones like that, they kind of go hand in hand, but they don't have to. But since a lot of people I know at some point have struggled from some form of impulsivity in their lives or impulsivity, <laughs> Wish I got a dollar for every time I did that. Yeah, but um, because a lot of people in their lives at some point, whether mild or even quite severely, have dealt with impulsivity. Almost got me. Impulsivity. Um, it's a pretty important topic for people to talk about. And um, it can be quite distressing. Okay, well, here's the next question. What do you do about it? Well, it takes some time to kind of learn some little tricks with it. One of the things I've always found really helpful... Um, I'll try to... I'll try to speak a little more slowly now if you're having a hard time keeping up. I'm sorry. You made it this far. Thank you. But, um, so um, one of the things you can kind of do with impulsivity, um, if I ever found myself getting them, especially the, you know, the bad ones, the little, you know, bad thoughts, um, one of, it may sound a little interesting I guess but I kind of if I kind of knew if there was a certain thing I was getting thoughts about like again random example please do not attempt but if I had thoughts of just maybe taking whatever item and throwing it I know random but okay yeah I'm thinking of throwing something across the room well those thoughts I'm having about that item right so I just kind of keep my distance from it until the, the thoughts subside and that can take a little time but I've noticed that it, um, because it took a kind of a long time for me to kind of get used to those little things creeping in and how to deal with them, especially when they feel so quick and automatic, a lot more so in my brain than like in reality, things probably wouldn't happen as quickly in reality as they do in my brain. So once I kind of realized that those things weren't really how I felt and I really didn't want anything kind of like that to happen, I could kind of catch it off guard and realize like, hey, that's not really how I feel. My brain's just tricking me. Like, nice try, brain. You're not going to get me this time. So once I kind of started to kind of recognize that and like, oh, hey, it's this again. I know how to deal with this. It was kind of easier to kind of kind of catch it early, I guess. And then um, if they were really kind of more intense, like the thoughts just kind of kept coming back and the little like urges, because you kind of get urges and almost like like compulsions kind of with it a little bit where, you know, once the thought's there, you kind of feel more obligated to do it because you are you feel like your brain is egging you on. I think at that point, once I kind of realized that was more repeated, if I like kept myself away from it or if I just kind of realized that's what was going on, I started to notice there was kind of almost this little pattern where like it felt like whatever impulse that was was not going to go away originally but you know maybe let's let's say like a half an hour later and I walk by that item again and I'm like hey I, I think that thought's gone now I don't think I feel like that anymore that was weird but hey it's gone now you know so once I kind of started to notice that pattern enough times, I started to realize that just because you have that little sensation doesn't necessarily mean that you have to just do something about it. Like you have a lot more control over yourself at times than you realize and it doesn't always feel that way. But once you kind of remind yourself that and you kind of get in the habit of kind of almost like being your own little coach of, hey, don't touch that. You know better. You get away from that. Like you kind of have some self-discipline, I guess is probably the better term for it you can kind of start to, to notice be different patterns with it and notice within yourself like if that's something that makes you kind of uncomfortable you're like well you don't obviously want to that makes you feel that crappy so I, I think you should give yourself some credit so yeah it takes some practice but you'd be surprised how like you kind of go through that enough times and it does eventually get easier if you made it this far again thanks I'm sorry if this video is a little all over the place but it was an important topic and I wanted to discuss it briefly. So, hope you all have a nice night, guys. Have a nice, safe night.